When I was growing up, one of the things I remember my mom particularly liked to do was to make collages and photo albums. And, but the thing is, many times when we sort of look at these, these moments that are captured, these pictures that we look at, we can look at them and we kind of remember the memories. We get brought back into that moment but we can almost treat the pictures as though our lives are made up of these discrete moments, these individual realities that are not necessarily connected to each other. But the reality is that life is not a set of pictures or memories. It's something more than that. Part of the reason I believe that, I'll be honest, is because, well, I was the youngest, so there's not a lot of pictures of me growing up. <laughs> no first communion, nothing. <coughs> not even baby pictures. <laughs> when you're fifth, yeah, it's done. <laughs> so life is not really just these pictures or simply memories. It's really a continuous journey. And all of the memories that we have are in their own ways connected together. And as we think about that, in the same way we can treat life as though there are these distinct moments that have no real connection, we can treat the scriptures in the same way. We hear the stories, well, over and over again. And when we hear them, we can see them sort of as a separate reality. Almost like it's a collage, a photo album of remembrances of things past. But the problem is, much like in our own lives, when we tend to look at life in that way, the scriptures will begin to lose their meaning. And ultimately, what we can end up doing is make them mean what we want. Because there's no connection between them. Rather, though, what we need to do with the scriptures is to remember they are a journey of faith. It is a journey that began at the moment that God created the moment he spoke his first word to bring creation into reality. It is there that the journey of salvation truly began. Because what is salvation? The very meaning of Christian life. It is simply to be in union, to have a relationship with our God. And so, what we see when we read through the scriptures, as we really listen and pay attention to what it is that they are telling us, is that God has been with us all along. And that he has been desiring nothing more than to save us. He has been, it's not so much that we have been seeking God. More importantly, God has been seeking us. God has been working to have a relationship with us. And that's what the scriptures, when they're taken as a whole, really begin to teach us. From creation, to Noah, to Moses, to the great kings and prophets, to Jesus himself. It all comes down to that one reality and that one truth. And all of the stories unfold this great mystery of God's gracious and merciful and compassionate love for us. But as we take that into account, 
we also need to recognize that there are moments that can come to give more meaning than others. Still connected all together. As Christians, we believe that the death and resurrection of Christ is one of those moments. It defined not simply what happened then and what would come, but it defined and gave meaning to everything that happened before it. For everything that happened before his death and resurrection was preparing for that moment when God would fully reveal his love to us in its fullest way. And in our own journey of faith, we have one of those moments also, individually. And it is what we will remember in a few moments when we renew our baptismal promises. It is simply that. Like the death and resurrection of Christ, which gives meaning to all of salvation history, to all of human history, so our baptism does the same in our own personal journey. For the simple reason is that it enters us in to the death and resurrection of Christ. It makes us one with Jesus. And it is that moment where we begin to truly experience, to encounter Christ in our lives in the fullest possible way. And ultimately, as we open up to the reality of baptism and what it is called to do for our lives, how we come to encounter Christ, we also recognize that through that moment, we are called to encounter Christ, not just in the particulars, i.e. baptism, First Communion, confirmation, our marriage, whatever it may be in the sacramental life of the church. Our journey and our encounter in Christ happens in so many different ways. It happens through nature, as Paul tells us. As St. Augustine spoke to us, we can see Christ, we can see our God in the very nature that he has created. It speaks of him for us. We can see, it, see him in the people that he places in our lives. That is why we begin Mass acknowledging the Lord be with you and with your spirit that is the acknowledgement of the Christ in me is recognizing the Christ in you. And Christ is, we are greeting Christ in each other. We can see Christ through all of the scriptures. When we truly open our ears and our hearts to listen to what it is God is trying to say to us. And in the sacraments, Christ is there, for Christ is the true minister of the sacraments, not the priest, not the deacon. It is Christ who uses us as his instrument. And we come to encounter the reality of Jesus with us, and most particularly in the Eucharist. For as Catholics, we do not believe what we receive here is but a symbol. It is not bread and wine any longer. It is truly the body and blood of Christ. It is truly his presence. The only difference between what we receive here this day and the Jesus who walked this planet some 2,000 years ago is how he looks. It is the same Christ. It is a moment truly to encounter our God. And ultimately, when we come to recognize all of that God does for us, all that Jesus is trying to do for us, we come to see what our journey is about. It is about leading us to a real relationship with Jesus. Through each and every encounter, building one upon the other. Helping us to open our hearts, our minds, our eyes, and our ears 
to hear, to see, to truly encounter our God. But it's not enough for us to just encounter God for ourselves. For Christian life is intended to be shared. It is intended, in a sense, to be passed on. Therefore, our relationship with Christ calls us to become what we've encountered, what we will receive in, this, in a few moments, to become the presence of Christ in the lives of others so that as they come on our journey, they will meet the stranger on the road to Emmaus. They will come to encounter Christ through us. Our faith is never intended to be private or hidden. As Jesus tells us, it should be shouted from the rooftops. We are to become the presence, the encounter of Christ in the world. And that ultimately is what our journey is about. And what we come to see and through that is that each snapshot of our lives should ultimately show one thing, Christ himself. And that is what will tie and bind together everything that happens in our journey of life, in our journey of faith. And what we come to recognize in that then is what this journey is about. It is the journey of eternal life. It is the journey of salvation. For salvation is simply to be in union with God, to be in a real relationship with our God. That's what it means to be saved. That is what prepares us for heaven. Eternity, eternal life, salvation doesn't happen when we die and we get to the pearly gates. It is intended to be lived here and now. And it is not something that we simply look to the past to see what has happened or wait for the future to happen. Our journey is now. It is here. And it is here that our God is calling you, calling you, to be in his presence, to experience and to encounter him. May we then open to this journey of faith. May we no longer look at it as simply moments in our lives. May we come to always open our hearts and our minds to the presence of the living God, to the presence of Jesus Christ. And may that give true meaning to the life we live. May it be the journey of our life, the journey of salvation.